This video is going to be about expanding the uh, electrical system in the rear of the van. I noticed that in the cab of the van there's a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and a lot of car accessories tend to run off of this. But there's no adapter like that in the rear of the van and it would be kind of handy to have one there. Also I want to install a cell phone signal booster which either has an AC adapter or one of these 12 volt adapters. Obviously it'd be a lot more efficient to run it off the 12 volt adapter as opposed to going through the inverter and then reconverting it back to DC. So I started looking at the circuit diagrams. Uh, Rangeline has, was very nice to include in their uh, owner's manual circuit diagrams for the whole van, so I found these extremely useful. And as I'm looking over the 12 volt circuit diagram, I notice that there is a uh, pre-wire circuit where they've installed a 12 volt uh, capable line but nothing is currently installed on it. So according to the circuit diagram, it's got uh, 60 watts available here uh, for a satellite power switch. Uh, so I took a look at where that is, and in the van, that is just aft of the microwave galley uh, up behind that cupboard. The next thing to do, of course, is to pull the back off the cupboard and see what's back there. See if I can find that uh, pre-wire and if it has uh, available capacity. The next project I wanted to work on was uh, to get some boost to our cell phone signal. We're going to be heading out into areas where we're not going to have a lot of coverage and internet is fun to have. So I did some searching online and I found there's various uh, cellular signal booster system. So I bought one of those and I want to install that, but we're going to need some power for it. So I dug into the circuit diagrams that Rangeline so helpfully provided and uh, I think I found some spare power here. So let me show you that. Pulling off the back of the cabinet, which by the way is not very fun. They put those screws in really tight and getting those hardened felt things out without completely destroying them is pretty difficult. But Pulling the back of the cabinet, you can see the various pre-wires that are available here. So checking the circuit diagram, I'm pretty sure this is the one we want right here. So this is actually a pre-wire for a uh, TV signal booster, but I don't use TV much. I do use the internet, so I'm going to use it as a cell phone signal booster instead. So I check the voltage on here, and sure enough, these are uh, 12 volt. According to the circuit diagram, um, this circuit here has 60 watts of power available at this pre-wire junction. That should be plenty to drive what we want. Uh, but kind of thinking ahead, I thought it would be nice to uh, uh, make it a little bit extensible. So I got some parts uh, to add to the solution. So the first thing I got here is a pair of these little uh, junction boxes. So I'm going to run my power into those first. Uh, then the uh, cell phone signal booster uses a standard uh, 12 volt car lighter adapter as its power supply. So I got uh, one of those and actually I figured I might as well get two and I can run them both out of this junction box as long as I don't exceed the 60 watts power that should be fine. And I noticed back here in the uh, range line they didn't have any of these 12 volt receptacles uh, they have plenty of 5 volt and inverted 120 volt, but there's a lot of car accessories that run off of this adapter. So I figured it'd be nice to have one back here too. As long as I was putting one in, why not put in two? So where I decided to put them in is we've got the, uh, the light switch control panel right here. I thought that's a good place for a control panel as well. So I got a couple of uh, lighted LED switches here. And I'm going to mount those right up here at the top of this panel. And then one of the 12 volt receptacles, I'm actually just gonna put behind here in the cabinet uh, and keep it completely out of the way. And the other one, I think I'm just going to wire up and run it out the bottom of the cabinet over here. Uh, so it'll be available for use externally. And I'll have them both switched so I can turn them on and off as I need to. All right, looking in here, this is where I'm gonna mount uh, the junction boxes. So these are nice little uh, covered junction boxes. They have little plastic covers, keep everything isolated. So I think I'm just going to screw these in and mount them uh, to this frame bracket right here and then run the power into there. 
Okay, there we have the junction boxes screwed in and tight. Before I put power in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the scary part. I'm going to drill some holes right up here for my power switches. I've checked behind, there's nothing important behind there. So I need to drill a hole the right diameter for this little switch to snap in. Well, there we have it. Uh, two holes and a beautiful furniture now. And we just gotta put the switches in. Okay. Just feed the pre-wired switches in. There we have the switches wired into the junction boxes there. So that's looking good. Ready for power to be hooked up. So I'll take one of the 12 volt receptacles here and just mount it internally uh, so it'll be available there. And the other one I'm going to take and I'm actually going to mount it underneath here. They had a cable pull hole which is quite frankly kind of useless because there's a big slot right up here that goes to the same thing. So if you need to run a cable you can just run it down here. You don't need this hole. So I'm going to use that to mount the 12 volt right there. And there you can see the uh, 12 volt is now mounted. I can just uh, flip that open, plug in 12 volt there, and you should be good to go. All right, uh, next step is to take the spare power here, connect it up to the junction box, put the cover plates over them so it's all nice and solid, and then we should have 12 volts available. And there is the final result. So I've got the uh, bus bars all set up. I've wired in the 14 volts. You can see I've got the uh, 12 volt car adapter zip tied to the frame there. That I'll use for my hidden power supply. And the other 12 volt down underneath here next to the inverter plug. So, and now for the moment of truth, uh, we will try it and see if the power's on. Yep. Functional, functional, functional. Looking pretty good there. It looks like it almost belongs. Now that I've got the uh, power circuit installed, the next step is to install my cell phone signal booster. So in order to do that, uh, I actually had to pull off the main control panel, which was pretty easy. It only had four screws holding it in place. Uh, so the four screws actually <laughs> drill into this wood thing that was stuck here. The other one drilled into the wood thing, but they almost missed it. It's like barely holding on, so I might want to do something about that to make it more secure. But they also hold on to these uh, two aluminum plates here, which should be pretty solid. Once you pull the four screws, you let it down, you unplug the cables, and then you can just take it off entirely uh, so you can take a look at it. And what I'm trying to run here is this is the inside antenna for the cell phone signal booster. And I would like to put it up here in the overhead cab because we're mostly going to be sitting in the front here. And it's supposed to be near where you want. Now I was going to run it behind here, but you can see there's not a lot of room that they've they've really sealed this up very tight. So I'm going to have to see if I can uh, get a cable through somewhere in here. It's looking awfully tight. Okay, I just managed to find one spot to fit this cable through. So this cable is kind of a mini coax and it just barely fit through and I kind of had to trim the wood around this piece a little bit even to get that through. But I made it. Here is the final wiring layout that we've got the bus put together. You can see the uh, 12 volt adapter and I've got the cell phone signal booster plugged in there. And all the wiring is tied down nicely with cable ties. Up front you can see this is the inside antenna. And I've got it uh, wired in running behind here. It's a very tight fit. There's barely room to run the cable through. It's got a pretty tight fit with this piece right here, but you can. And run it behind the control tower here to this cabinet. This cabinet here is where I'm going to mount the actual cell phone signal booster. You can see here's the antenna cable here. I also ran some string just in case I want to pull something later. That's always handy to do. And it looks like I'm going to have to fish behind the microwave because for whatever reason uh, they did not make the backing in this cabinet removable. So, not a big deal. It's a fairly short fish. This is the cell phone signal booster. What I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mount it 
to the roof of the cabinet back in here. So the cable's going to go in and go there and the power will come out. So I just had to punch a few holes and then figure out how to mount this. Probably just with some uh, adhesive or sticky tape to the back of the felt here. And then that'll go in here and it'll mount to the roof so I can still see uh, the status of the signals, but it's kind of out of the way and not taking up any more cabinet space than it has to. And then back here, we're going to take the cable that goes to the outside antenna, and they gave me a ton of cable. Uh, but this cable is going to have to go right up through the roof vent right in here, out to the roof. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is the antenna cap on the roof, and I've already pulled it off, you can see here. Um, and this is the antenna, the outside antenna for the cell phone signal booster. Now, it came with a mounting bracket, but I couldn't find a good place to mount it. It was kind of an L bracket. Uh, so rather than using the L bracket, this seems reasonably sturdy. So I'm just going to mount this directly to the plastic cap and then screw the whole assembly back on here. Uh, so that's my plan. We'll see how it works out. And there it is mounted to the roof cap. Put a little bit of uh, silicone adhesive both on the inside and the outside where it mounts to make sure there's no water wicking in around the seam and that should hold it pretty tight. Do make sure not to get any of the silicone on the uh, RF connector of course. While that silicone is drying uh, let's go ahead and run the cable up to the roof. They gave us a ton of cable um, and they do recommend keeping the outside antenna as far away from the inside antenna as possible which is why I put the inside antenna all the way up at the front of the van and I'm mounting the outside antenna all the way at the back of the van. But even with that, there's just going to be so much cable left. I guess I'm just going to have to leave it uh, zip tied up behind the uh, felt walls in the back cabinets here. <laughs> Cables are all fished now and you can see I've punched some holes in the covered backing to run the cables through. And then this unit will mount right here on the roof up there. So let's go ahead and screw it in place and see if it works. That is how it looks at the end of the day. I ended up having to redrill one of these holes because I got it too close together. I was too optimistic about how much the cable would bend. Uh, these things are really stiff and they have a long lead out so you have to drill the holes pretty far apart. But overall I think that's pretty good. Mounted on the roof of the cabinet there. Won't take up too much space. Still should be visible see the indicator lights. There we have the cable. We ran it from up front. A fair bit of slack. And up through the hole in the roof. You have to kind of jiggle it a little bit because the holes don't exactly line up. You have to go forward and then back to get through the roof. So let's go up top and see what it looks like. And here we are. There's the cable running up top. Here's the antenna. We'll just screw it in there. Mount the whole assembly there. It should be Nice and tall for antenna clearance. It doesn't go any higher than the air conditioner though, so it doesn't change the total height of the van. It's decently far away from any other metal obstructions per the so metal obstructions per the instructions. Alright, everything's plugged in. Let's power it on with the switch. Power comes on. Signal booster starts looking for signals, and we get five greens. So it is happy. And there is the completed piece. So you can see it's all attached. Uh, very firm, not going to move. And hopefully I've got it all sealed up around there so that no water comes in. I'm going to leave the back cupboard off for a bit until it rains next time and check to make sure this thing is all watertight.